Now to the fallout from We Charity shutting down its Canadian operations. Investigations are underway into the controversy surrounding the organization's failed student grant program. But there are major questions about how those probes can carry on and exactly how We plans to restructure. Abigail Beeman is digging into that story. We will be closing We Charity's operations in Canada. In announcing the end in Canada, We Charity offered big numbers. Youth who logged over 70 million volunteer hours, 30,000 small businesses run by women lifting their families out of poverty. But there is still uncertainty from the charity the government claims was the only one capable of carrying out the Canada Student Service Grant Program. Over the next 6 to 12 months, the founding Kielbergers will sell off assets, including the Toronto headquarters, to fund an endowment to keep international projects going and put all resources online. But they have a lot of other entities. In a statement to Global News, We Charity says the American arm is not currently impacted and the future of the for-profit social enterprise Me to We still hasn't been determined. This was a group that was desperately looking for some form of bailout because of COVID and they just happened to know all the key ministers. That's the question. I'm focused on it. The opposition is pushing its investigation at parliamentary committees, paused by Parliament's prorogation. This isn't about a witch hunt. This isn't about political gamesmanship. This is about reassuring Canadians that money that is spent in a pandemic, and we are going to spend enormous amounts of money to get people through this crisis, that that money is being spent for the best interests of the Canadian people, full stop. There's a lot of questions that still need to be answered, and just like proroguing Parliament doesn't shut down this investigation, uh, closing up their Canadian shop uh, doesn't uh, relieve the WE organization of their obligations to provide information to Parliament. Are there lessons to be learned from that episode? Sure. Uh, but decisions by WE are solely decisions by WE. And I think we're going to continue doing what we have always said we were going to do, which is support Canadians through this. Late this afternoon, WE told Global News it would be happy to turn over those documents once there's a new committee. We also know the Ethics Commissioner is investigating the Prime Minister and former Finance Minister Bill Morneau. But no word yet from Justin Trudeau on the organization's decision to close in Canada. Abigail Beeman, Global News, Ottawa. And today, another black mark for Bill Morneau. Canada's election watchdog says he broke the rules during the 2019 election. On the campaign trail, Morneau promoted two Liberal candidates in his official capacity as a cabinet minister. The election commissioner says that amounts to using public office for partisan gain. It violates a section of the Election Act that prohibits anyone but individuals from donating to political parties. Essentially, the government, which paid for the events, is not an individual. Morneau has agreed to pay a $300 fine and post a link to the ruling on his website. The White House is in damage control mode tonight over revelations the president deliberately misled Americans about the seriousness of COVID-19. Donald Trump insists he downplayed the threat to protect the public. But as Jackson Prosco explains, his actions are just one part of the failure by the U.S. to effectively fight the pandemic. Why did you lie to the American people and why should we trust what you have to say Such now? A terrible question and the phraseology, I didn't lie. As President Donald Trump tries to manage a crisis of his own creation, he's left on the defensive over his failure to share key information about the severity of COVID-19. I don't want to jump up and down and start screaming death, death, because that's not what it's about. Trump now claims he did the American people a favor by downplaying the threat even as he acknowledged to journalist Bob Woodward that the virus was far worse than the flu. This is more deadly. This is five per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. If Americans had been told that initially, Dr. Peter Hotez believes they would have taken the pandemic far more seriously. As a consequence, the American public never really fully understood or appreciated the gravity of the COVID-19 epidemic until they started seeing family members and friends get sick or hospitalized. Today, more than 190,000 Americans are dead. The U.S. economy is struggling, and there's still a debate fueled by Trump about preventative measures like face masks and restrictions on gatherings that could save even more lives. It had the effect of turning this into what was one of the worst public health disasters in modern American history into something even bigger, which is a homeland security threat. The question is whether voters will care. Michigan's governor gave a preview of the argument Democrats are likely to make. 
they knew they didn't tell us. Trump isn't taking the bait, insisting he's better suited than anyone to lead during this once in a generation crisis. Expert or not, we're not doing any more shutdowns. Trump is holding firm, even as his country records more cases and more deaths than any other nation on earth. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington.